Hello everyone, it's Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID Symptom Study app, giving you our weekly update. The news is generally good. The number of new daily infections does continue to drop and we're now below 30,000, about 28,000 the last count. And this has continued to drop, as you know, according to our data, since the 1st of January uh, nationally. This uh, is happening in most areas. The R value uh, is still uh, between 0.8 and 0.9. There is some signs that this uh, decrease is running out of steam, as I suggested would happen last week. And uh, we can do all we can to try and uh, keep it going. But it still means that there are around half a million people with symptoms in the country. Um, so uh, that's about one in a hundred people. And the risk of infection is still pretty high. The hospital data is starting to show a reduction uh, in admissions for the first time. And hopefully that will eventually lead to a reduction in the uh, death count, which is still uh, appallingly high as we crossed the 100,000 mark, sadly, uh, a few days ago. Now, we're seeing the regions coalescing together. So the risks uh, between London and the rest of the country are now getting smaller. And there's only about a twofold difference between the best and the worst regions, which is remarkable given how for most of the pandemic, we've seen fivefold differences between the north and the south early on, and then London and Wales and the rest of the country now. So it's now looking a more similar picture uh, across the country. The uh, rates in the hospitals of, of COVID is still high, between about 25% and 47% of hospital patients uh, have COVID. That rate has come down a little bit by about 5% which is also uh, encouraging. Now, some of you might have been confused uh, by media reports that nothing was changing and uh, other studies are, are reporting different findings to ours. What is misunderstood is that um, there are uh, four sources of data about what's happening in the pandemic. One of them is the number of confirmed cases, which is just the number of swab positive tests that the government reports. And that is telling you the number of new cases every day. And that is uh, very similar to ours. So it's been falling since early January, just in line with our data. So ours matches that very well. The other two sources of data, the REACT study and the ONS survey, and they report something different to us. They report prevalence. And this is the number of people that uh, in a time window that have uh, COVID. And that number uh, is not the same as the new cases. And so it changes much slower. So when you hear a report from, say, React or an Earth saying things aren't uh, changing, it's because they can't measure the new cases, which is the, the latest data. So our data is about a week ahead of what else is happening. But in general, if we use the same methods and we can, uh, from our data, produce prevalence amounts, we get very similar estimates to the other two surveys. So don't be alarmed. It does end up all being consistent. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is just remind you that we're, we're doing the vaccine studies um, and we are collecting lots of data and we'll update you again on Monday about that. We've got some fascinating data coming in and uh, over 10% of the population have now been vaccinated, which is fantastic news. Things are slowly getting better. We do have to uh, endure this lockdown for a bit longer, but there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for logging.